advice on, on the topic. Um, I would, the, the panel is called, uh, has conditionality failed or is the failure of EU conditionality? I think it's not the failure of EU conditionality which is very much uh, what we're discussing or we should be discussing in the context of Macedonia, but rather the crisis of the EU enlargement, um, which is different than conditionality. Now you could stop the conversation very quickly and say, well, the main problem arguably has been the decision of Greece to uh, block the beginning of talks uh, for Macedonia in 2009 and in subsequent years, and previously, of course, accession to NATO for Macedonia. And I think this, of course, explains to a large part the crisis in Macedonia today. So that that decision was, I think, a strategic error uh, of Greece, and it was uh, was an unfortunate circumstance that the EU member states otherwise were unwilling to invest in um, convincing Greece or overcoming this crisis. And I think now, depending on how you count, six or seven years later, we're seeing the consequences of this um, lack of interest of others. So, in the European Union, of course, each member state has a veto right on many key decisions, um, in particular when it comes to accession or uh, enlargement. And we see, as observers have noted, the nationalization of the enlargement process, where individual member states increasingly interfere or intervene for a number of reasons. This is not just affecting Macedonia, but maybe more so than anybody else. Now, this development has been a very big departure from earlier enlargements where uh, 10 years ago when countries of Central and Eastern Europe joined the EU, uh, there were lots of bilateral disputes, but when individual countries tried to bring them up, there was a concerted effort of other EU member states to say, no, this should not stop enlargement. And so, it's not enough to just say it's the difficulty of resolving the name dispute uh, and the Greek uh, uh, the Greek position, which has caused the current crisis in terms of EU enlargement. It is also the unwillingness of other countries and the inability of the EU to overcome this and to put a uh, process in place to um, resolve it. <coughs> and this, of course, raises a larger question. It raises the question of what has been going on with enlargement? Why is it not working in the way it was promised, as Sunita was, was pointing out? We also we are in a situation now where uh, Macedonia was a front runner, was the first country to sign the Stabilization Association Agreement in 2001. Um, so it is, was the first 15 years ago, or 14 years ago, and is certainly considered to be one of the countries which is, has the greatest difficulty in moving forward at the moment. So we have some elements which are specific to the case of Macedonia, and I would say one of the key elements has been one side uh, objection of Greece over the name and the response of the Commission. The European Commission has uh, tried to lobby for the beginning of the session talks uh, over the last six years and has been doing so rightfully but at, over, over time has been overlooking uh, lack of reforms, democratic setbacks in the government because it did not want to reverse its previous decision to recommend accession talks. So the consequence has been that if you look at the last progress report uh, of last year, there's very critical words of uh, the states of uh, democracy individually in Macedonia, but it begins with a statement saying Macedonia is a consolidated democracy. Uh, and there seems to be a tension between the wish to recommend accession talks and the reality uh, the report observes, which is much more critical. So, I would argue that the Commission, in its effort to put pressure on Greece to not veto accession talks, has lent itself to be uncritical of, of government policies which deserve more critical scrutiny over the years. So this has been, in a certain way, the specific dynamics for Macedonia. But I would argue there's a bigger crisis at play, which is, although we're talking about a more immediate crisis now, is important to keep in mind. There is a lack of interest for enlargement in the European Union. Citizens, many citizens of the European Union do not want enlargement. And that's a reality. We can look at it critically, and I'm certainly uh, 
one, of, one person was arguing very much in favor of enlargement. But we have to realize that three quarters of the population in countries like Austria uh, or Germany, Finland, the Netherlands, are against enlargement. And this makes it very difficult. And governments have often been disregarded. We can still argue for enlargement, but the atmosphere has changed in the last year with EU parliament elections, with um, the economic crisis. The enthusiasm for enlargement has declined. So while the European Union remains on the formal level committed, it's lacking the enthusiasm to pursue it. So in many ways, I would argue that Greece's decision to uh, block uh, the process for, for Macedonia has been sometimes maybe discreetly welcomed by other EU member states who just aren't interested in enlarging the development. So the dilemma which I find is that over recent years in the EU many have been faking enlargement and many of the countries of the Western Balkans have been faking reforms and both sides liked it because it's more convenient to pretend than to do the really hard work. So this is uh, a real question of how to change this dynamic uh, to a situation where reforms become more real and not just superficial. And I'm talking more of the broader picture than just specifically Macedonia. Uh, and how also the, the prospect of enlargement becomes real again, and not just something which is said, well, if you do your job down the road at some point, maybe you will join. This is too abstract. So there is a need to think about how to reinvigorate. Unfortunately, at the moment in the European Union, there is no appetite for it. So in many ways, the initiative, the pressure, the arguments have to also come from the region. The second uh, real problem is that I would argue the European Union has not seen the has not seen the forest of democracy for the trees of individual indicators. If you look at the EU progress reports, their collection of individual measures of rule of law, media freedom, a little bit here, a little bit there, but there's not a general sense of what is the state of democracy? What is the overall picture going on? And as I've argued elsewhere, there's been a serious backsliding in the state of democracy, not just in Macedonia, but also in Serbia, also in Montenegro, also in other countries of the region. And they constitute a serious challenge to the European Union. And the EU, in its tools, has often overlooked these trends or looked at them very selectively. Doesn't it didn't have a comprehensive perspective? which is to a large degree the result of the fact that the EU does not have a democratic acquis. It has individual rules which are part of what we understand democracy. The EU requires countries to be democracies to join, but it lacks a comprehensive understanding of what, what this democracy should look like. And, of course, this has been sabotaged even from within the European Union. If you look at the policies of the Hungarian government of Viktor Orban, it's a perfect example of undermining what is our understanding of democracy. Always with the argument of saying, well, each individual aspect by itself is not a problem for democracy, but taken together means a picture where democracy is severe, severely dismantled. So, the European Union is confronted with several challenges. And uh, the first one is its inability to see the overall picture of what democracy should look like. It can look many different ways. Belgian democracy is very different from German democracy or British democracy. But there should be a sort of clear understanding of what this forest of democracy should look like. The second point is, as I've noted, the challenge of not understanding that seeing enlargement as a low priority, as a process which maybe goes on, but is not important, but certainly not going to be on the agenda uh, for the coming years, uh, constitutes a crisis uh, and a major disincentive for reforms, not just in Macedonia, but in the region. And I think it will come back to haunt the European Union if it doesn't take it seriously. Nobody uh, realistically expects a large in the next five years, um, as Jean-Claude Juncker said, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't pursue it vigorously and with strong support of the European Union. And this is what is currently lacking. So these are some of the broader <coughs> challenges that the European Union faces in the region, which Macedonian crisis is just a reflection of. The problem, of course, and we'll talk about the long table about how to get out of it. Uh, I will not want to take a preempt this discussion. But certainly the European Union has a legitimacy problem in Macedonia, and it makes it much more difficult to be a constructive actor. Um, 
Now, I don't think that the engagement of a few MEPs is changing that dynamics fundamentally. Uh, I would think that the European Union has to think more broadly about how to re-engage. Um, and there's no easy answer. 